Cathedral of Dr. Christopher, and uh, we're doing our first uh, well training video. You'll notice that we have uh, put up a pup. Pup stands for a piece of pipe, attack the top and bottom. And here you see a spacing tool on each side. We use that in place of two more tacks on the side uh, to hold our space and give us a better fit up. If you put two tacks instead of four, uh, you eliminate half your welding problems. Uh, if you're a welder or you're gonna learn, if you're a new welder, that tying in and coming out of a tack is where you have your most trouble. So two tacks eliminates half of those problems, half of the tie you have to make. Now I fitted this up. This is 250 wall pipe, it's a quarter inch. That's a little bit thin. They make thinner pipe, they make 188, etc. cetera, wall. And it's a little bit like welding a beer can if you're used to main line. I fitted it up so the top half of this joint, both top quarters, is a little too wide. It's not a good fit up. And I did that so you could see and hear what it sounds like to uh, make that weld. You'll notice the sound uh, changes. I am pulling away with that rod a little bit. I'm coming back, put a little bit of pulling away. Bit. We call that stepping or stitching. A little bit when you weld, like when you weld flat and you move ahead a little bit and come back. Sound is very important. I, I'm gonna be saying it a lot during this uh, training. Listen to the sound. Learn what the sound sounds like and you will know what's going on inside. Now Daniel here is here helping me now. He's, uh, he's been a welder for a good while now, but he's come here to help me. Watch how he handles himself. The most important thing to a welder, if you're a helper, is that you listen and you react instantly. You'll also see that if I tell him down five or ten, he repeats that back to me, just like in the military. Or just like when I was doing diving work. When I was diving, I would tell the top side something, they would repeat what I said so that we both made sure we were on the same uh, path. Now this, this top quarter here is a little wider than the previous one. And uh, you can't see it too well, but I have my left hand with two fingers around that rod to steady it. When you're stepping or stitching for a wide place, it'd be very easy if I was welding one hand to get out of that bevel and arc that pipe. So it's a little tedious. And you just saw Daniel hand me a rod while I was still welding. That's not, uh, that's not a video trick. Um, that is a technique when you're pipelining. That's mostly what I've done all my life. I do it the same whether I'm doing production pipe like this or pipeline. It is a trick for speed. I have that rod in my hand. I'm running beads with the other one one-handed. And uh, as soon as I stop, I throw that rod down, usually on the ground. I don't worry about catching rods at that time. And I uh, roll my hand over, put the rod in, and I'm back in the game. It's a little bit like, like NASCAR when you're doing it. You want to have a, uh, a technique that you use over and over so your subconscious mind knows what's going on. And you see this is a little wide right here. I'm having to get out of the puddle, break the arc, let it cool just that split second and go back in it. And then I'm wiggling my hand a little bit. That's a technique and a trick you can use for a little bit of a wide space. If I wiggle that rod side to side, it turns the rod where it catches one side of the bubble and then the other. It helps bridge that gap. You can zoom in even bigger. I'm watching right now on a big screen. You can see the bead right behind that arc. You can uh, open it up. That liquid metal is trailing me. Gravity's helping it fall. The fastest way to weld is you start off on that top where my hand is. Start off kind of medium. You get going and you can kind of tell you're okay. You kick the heat up. As you come down that side, you kick the heat up more and more. Your fastest straightaway to weld pipe is in the side vertically. If you put a square around that pipe and do an imaginary box, you would have flat welding, vertical welding, and overhead. As you get off that top, come down the side, that metal's gonna follow you, and gravity's gonna help you. Now this fit up here, this space is a good space. Listen to the difference in the sound, and uh, you can tell the difference in a good space and a bad space.
You'll notice that I have my leg stretched back, left leg, right knee, handle the pipe has three points of contact, and that allows me freedom, one hand weld, we call that rubbernecking, and if you don't have to put a mud board down for every pass, and you can learn to weld that way, it will make you faster. And there it is.